I am sure you hear this over and over and over, is dyskinesia an inevitable side effect of taking carbidopa levodopa for a long time? Is it something you just, should you push taking cinnamon as far down the road as you can, or is it just uh, do what you got to do? Yeah, um, that is a very, very, very common question. And understandably so. It's, it's something that I, you know, if I had Parkinson's disease, I would worry about too. You know, we, we used to think that dyskinesia was not that bothersome to patients, that the, the stiffness, the slowness, the tremor, the walking problems was more disabling than the dyskinesia. I think as time has gone on, we're starting to recognize that that, that does bother people quite a bit. Um, I would say most patients develop dyskinesia at some point down the line. Um, in terms of risk factors for dyskinesias, Higher levodopa dosing is certainly one of our major ones. And so I'm also always walking the line between, you know, treating you too much uh, and treating you too little where you're just not functioning as well. And so that line is going to be different with different people. So that's, that's why I really try to have frank conversations with people in clinic about how they're doing functionally. And hopefully I do a good job of talking about risks of higher doses of medication. Uh, but other things that are going to increase your risk for dyskinesia is younger age at onset. So people that are in their 40s or 50s are going to have a higher risk of dyskinesia than people that develop Parkinson's disease later. Uh, females actually have a higher degree of risk with getting dyskinesia than males do. Uh, and then depending on who you look at and who you quote, um, different aspects of disease severity seem to be correlated with higher risk of dyskinesia as well. Uh, seems like the patients that have a lot of tremor have less risk of dyskinesias. What I typically quote people is that, again, depending on some of these risk factors, and, and it really depends on which study you look at, but your risk of dyskinesia is probably about 10% a year. I'd say about 40 to 50% of people five years in have some level of dyskinesia. But that can be very different for different folks, right? I mean, you can have very mild wiggles that no one really notices and you can have a lot more severe wiggles. That It's a spectrum. And I'd say by 10 years out, most people have some level of dyskinesia. The older folks are, are gonna be at less risk of that. But most people at 10 years have some level. So strange. <laughs> I mean, that the, the young onset causes it early and you know, what all that is, I'm sure that's, that's the, the mystery of, of Parkinson's that so many people are working on already. Yeah, I will tell you, and I, I guess I really want to mention this, you know, different people have different management strategies and that changes, you know, with time. I mean, that, you know, 20 years, well, I'm not even that long, 10 years ago, people were very pro what we call dopamine agonists, MAOB inhibitors. So anything that wasn't levodopa, there's a lot of levodopa phobia out there. And now the pendulum has kind of shifted and people, a lot of more people are more pro levodopa. The, the side effect potential seems to be less with some of these other medications. Mm -hmm. And the benefit is so much more profound with levodopa compared to some of these other medications. Um, now the pendulum may be swinging a little bit back the other way. It's hard to tell. People that have, again, have different management strategies. Uh, I will tell you, I'm, I tend to be more pro levodopa. I know my partner, Dr. Zayas, also tends to be more pro levodopa. Um, so I don't want people to be scared of leave it up because of these long-term complications. There's, there's some newer publications out that the risk of, you know, with leave it up compared to some of these other drugs is not as different as we thought it was. Yeah. Uh, we also have a lot more, um, treatment strategies out now where we can reduce the risk of dyskinesia. Um, there's something called amantadine that works really well for dyskinesia. Mm -hmm. There's also surgical therapies like DBS that can reduce dyskinesia. So there's ways to attack dyskinesia if it does occur and really it's functionally limiting to people. So I don't want them to, you know, kind of half do it with their medications because they're trying not to get dyskinesia and then they get it anyway and they've lived several years kind of half doing it and not functioning as well as they need to. Yeah. So it's always a give and take, but dyskinesias can be definitely a problem. I just, I just don't want people to live in fear of them because mm -hmm. there are strategies to get around them. Yeah.